Welcome everybody. My name is Mina Jane and I'm the director of the Ashland Public Library and I am so thrilled to be here with one of my very favorite authors, Nalini Singh. We are going to be doing a free for all Q&A and she's going to answer as much as she wants to. So that is the privilege of the author, right? <laughs> but before we get to my questions, which I have a lot, so you, I hope you do well, I'll try to get you to yours as well. I do have a couple <laughs> of things to say. One is that you can buy signed books from uh, Nalini from Bank Square Books, and I will be putting those um, a link to that in the chat. So feel free to order her books and get you know signed books or gold. Everybody who knows me knows that. Um, if you have questions, and I know you do, put them in the Q and A, and I will uh, be asking Nalini during the talk about what what uh, questions you have as well as mine. Like I said, because I have a lot. Um, and I always like to thank the friends of the Ashland Library for supporting our programs because we couldn't do it without them. And I also wanna thank Erin Galloway and the people at Berkeley who helped us put this program together because um, they're awesome to work with. And I really love um, all the authors that they work with and just um, their willingness to uh, bring their authors to their readers. So thank you for, to them. Okay, so I was gonna introduce Nalini, but I sort of feel like she does not need introduction. She is one of, like I said, one of my favorite writers who started out with um, Harlequin books back in the day and now writes the Psy Changeling series, the Archangel series, the Guild, uh, Guild Hunters, I'll call it, right? And then um, the Rock series and now Mysteries. And um, I have to tell you, Nalini, that when you first started branching out, because I love the Psy Changeling series, I was like so mad. I was like, what, what, what? How will I get my books? But then you made me love the Archangel series. <laughs> I was like, okay, all right, all right. Okay, it's good. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself if you would like to. But my first question to you really is what is your origin story as a writer? When did you start writing romance? And um, I know you said you write all the time, but like, when did you really think I could do this for a living? Um. So I started writing quite young, um, just all kinds of writing, um, even before I was a teenager, I think. But um, I started taking it really seriously when I was a teenager. In terms of when I thought I could do this as a living, honestly, not for a long time. I didn't know anybody who was a writer. Like I was in the wilderness. I am self-taught as a writer. I wasn't for a long time part of any writing groups or anything like that so I actually did not know like the people who were writers like you know quotation marks you know they they were just people they were like celebrities you know not actual people that that that's how I thought of them in my mind when I was younger and um and I think particularly in New Zealand it's a very small place there's I would say there's very few writers who do it for a living uh, and um so yeah, just honestly, not for a really, really long time. And I think it was in my 20s that I thought, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try to see if I can make it happen. Um, and even after that, you know, it, it took a long time. There's a lot of rejection along the way and um, a lot of writing. Uh, but it's all led me to here. So it's all good. Um, so yeah, I feel very lucky to be able to make my living as a writer because writing for me was a hobby you know it was what I did for joy and now I get to do that as my work as well and it's wonderful I mean obviously there's harder things and there's things I enjoy more but I would never change it for the world I, I overall I love I love it I love um, even when I'm like today honestly I spent 30 minutes on a single line because that line just wasn't working and it's really important <laughs> and it drove me crazy but when I got it when I got it I was like oh okay yeah it it, it just settles and it feels good and yeah so I love it I love I love what I do and I hope I'm doing this you know forever more well I, I know on your website it says you'll do it until they you know take the pen out of your cold dead hand or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I'm with you, Nalini, the whole way. <laughs> I think I might have made up the cold dead hand thing. <laughs> I think it's got like keel over the keyboard, which is pretty similar, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, well, the, either one works as long as you just keep writing. 
Um, so I want to know, how did you come on the idea of the Psy Changelings? Um, did it sort of like fully form in your head this world or did it evolve as you wrote more stories? So even though I started with, as you mentioned, the category Harlequin books, um, I've always been a big science fiction and fantasy reader as well. And at some point along the way, I figured out that you could put them together you know, the romance and the science fiction fantasy because that's what paranormal romance is or urban fantasy romance. And so I was always fiddling with ideas in the background. And, but this particular world, when it came together, it was a lot of my ideas that I'd been thinking about for a long time, but thinking about them as separate ideas. So one of the ideas that have been circling in my head for a while was, um, obviously I love paranormal romance. So I'd been reading a ton of shapeshifter books at one point and I was like I don't know if I had a bad run or what but everybody in these books did not want to be a shapeshifter so it was like some curse or, you know like that they hated it and and I was like I think it would be freaking cool <laughs> to shift into an animal like a leopard or a wolf so that was one idea that was sort of circling in my brain and the other idea was um I, I'm fascinated by the human brain and the capacity um, that we have, um, you know, for growth and what we can do with it. And, and I thought, well, you know, what if we had actual psychic abilities and what if it drove us insane? And, you know, so all these ideas were sort of separate, completely separate ideas. And then I remember, I literally remember sitting in my apartment. I was living in Japan at the time. So I'm living, I'm sitting in my apartment and the tatami mats there and I can see out my little I was on the second floor of an apartment um, building a little one and I could see through the glass doors and I was opposite like a school but it was um it was like the weekend so it's completely empty I lived in a town that had like one street light okay so this is how small <laughs> this place was <laughs> there's like one street light and when the crossing signal went I could hear it from my apartment because it was so quiet so it's this really quiet place and I'm just sitting there and I'm just staring and for some reason, I remember staring at the, um, the air conditioner and suddenly it just came. It was like a click. Um, and I wrote obsessively, like um, I've spoken about this before and, and I wrote Slave to Sensation um, within a month. Um, I was working full time at the time. Um, I ate peanut butter toast for dinner every single night. And I literally just wrote around work. So like I did not go out on weekends. My friends were like, are you, are you a hermit now? I'm like, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> because I was so obsessed with this book. And normally when I write, I write very rough drafts, like super rough. It's like a skeleton story. And then I fill everything in and sometimes not even in order. I write scenes, you know, all over the show. But this book, it, it came together. Like it had been growing and growing and growing in my brain for years with all those ideas. and and that first draft, it was actually really clean. And there's actually a lot of that first draft in the book that became the published book. Mm -hmm. So I think it was just the right time for the idea. I was ready to write it. And as a writer, I was in a place where I could write it because um, I think as a writer, I know I've developed skills as I've gone along. Each, each book I've written, each story I've written, it's given me more skills as a writer and I think that moment when Slave to Sensation came together in my head all the all the dominies were in position you know it was mm -hmm. like okay it's time let's do it so yeah, we did it <laughs> yeah well I know for myself and I think for a lot of people here you know one read and that's it you're just completely entranced with that with that world and I do want to point out to everybody that Nalini is wearing a size shirt you know the world of the sigh <laughs> oh yeah I'll, I'll see if i can bring it closer so you can see it's actually tiny little stars on the sweatshirt so. <laughs> well you really need those like rainbows on it and a, maybe a net of some sort <laughs> yeah i need to maybe get some rainbow earrings and then it'll be like a little bit of you know both <laughs> represented <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, I do have to point out that Alina said earlier that my questions don't suck. So thank you very much. Um, <laughs> um, so I am, I just want to let you know, we do have a ton of questions already, but I do want to say that I have a few questions that I want to ask and then I'll, I will get to everybody else's, I promise. Um, 
So I think I one of the things, oh, I was going to say that um, at my last romance book club, we read your books and people love them, of course. I got a lot of people, you know, hooked. And um, we asked the question, what would you want to be, a psi, a changeling, or a human? And almost everybody said changeling. I said psi because oh, I want to. Interesting. Yeah. I know. I was like, oh, I want to be, I want to be a psych psychometrist or what is that when that, where you can like touch something and you know, yeah, it's history. Psychometrist, yeah. So <laughs> I'll ask here, what do you guys want to be? If you could be a ch anything in the side changeling world or a guild hunter world. Oh, <laughs> let's see what people <laughs> say. <laughs> okay. So one of the things I love about your stories, even in your earliest books, because I read them all is that your main characters really have care for each other and loyalty to, towards each other. And there's never that big misunderstanding. So how, how did that really become a hallmark of your writing? Cause you started it from the very beginning. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. It took me a while to realize that the books I most love to read have those kind of relationships because I, I get frustrated with books where there's, there's big misunderstandings all the way. And then they, then they get together and that's the happy ever after because I'm like but I don't believe it <laughs> I want them to be actually be working together and I think that's partially why I wasn't a very successful writer for Harlequin because um for the line I wrote for Silhouette Desire because that is about the drama you know um beautiful dramatic stories um I have friends who, who really write amazing books for them and I've read their books and you know when I'm in the mood I love that that sort of dramatic, um, you know, there's um, the enemies and, you know, and, and then they come together and it's a great love story. But um, it's not naturally what I, uh, what is my tendency overall. And so I, so this is when I talk about things like that, this is me looking back because I'm not conscious of it at the time. But I've, uh, this is something I have come to realize that for me, I find the most pleasure in growing relationships and seeing where relationships grow. And that's partially why I write series. And I think this is very visible in the Guild Hunter series in particular, because we've got Elena and Raphael. And in that first book, that first book ends where I think a lot of books would end, where it's like that there's they finally come together after all this drama and then it's the ending right but that's not enough for me <laughs> I for me this series is about finding out how two people so this is a, a human or a mortal who's fallen in love with an immortal and for me the true happier ever after is seeing how they make that work like I want to see the relationship I want to see what they're like as partners um, and I love I love doing that and I think that's just grown naturally from what speaks to me as a reader and as a writer and what I really enjoy writing mm -hmm. um even in um so one of my Harlequin books I always make a joke that so secret baby is not one of my I don't like secret baby tropes okay so I, I argue with this with one of my closest friends who has written you know secret baby books she's like oh they're good and I'm like yeah I like yours but I like it's not I'm not gonna do it but anyway um, so I'm like, yeah, I wrote a secret baby book once and it's um, in the first line, she's like, I'm pregnant. So it's like the first line of the book. So it's, it's, it's like, I, I really, even that book, that's a marriage and trouble book. And I think you could kind of see where I started figuring this out, like um, that I really like, I like, I like relationships mm -hmm. and the building of relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, both series of, uh, of course have, you know, that build and you get to see the characters grow and change and, and, and even argue sometimes. And you're like, oh, well, that's real life. You know, yeah, we don't always go on, you know, and you, then you, and that's part of the growth is then you, how do you figure that out? Yeah. And I think uh, like, I'll just stick with the Raphael and Elena because um, just because I mentioned them before, but you can see that um, I think, especially in uh, the second book and the third book, I can just kiss and I can just consort you can see them struggling to adapt because it's like they're two completely different people in two completely different worlds that have come together. And it's like, how do we make this function? Because mm -hmm. the love is there. And that's that's critical to me. I didn't I never wanted to write a series where we were in any doubt about the love. 
it's not about the love it's about all the other stuff around it which I think makes it really interesting and actually makes the relationship deeper because we get to see okay they're making choices they're, it, he's making a choice to actually be a little bit more human you know and mm -hmm. um and she's making a choice to to look through his eyes like he's lived a thousand five hundred years he's not going to act human um in, in the sense that maybe she's used to. So I love all that stuff. I love going deep into relationships and figuring out how people, you know, work and how they work together. I think you do that so beautifully because it just keeps us coming back for more. And I say us because we're all, we're all you know I'm saying the truth. <laughs> um, so another concept that runs through your books that is that I think is so powerful is that that emotion and with that without empathy and emotion the only thing left is a vacuum of power and corruption. That's sort of like what I get from your stories. Um, it's not just with the side, but it's with the archangels, as you can see. And how, how did you, like, where did that come from that you have it in both series and it's such a, such a, a bedrock of those series? You know, honestly, that's one of those things I can't tell you where it oh. came from. I think it's just, it's one of those things as a writer that happens. And it's, it speaks to, um, so some writers talk about what is our core story. Um, and, and it doesn't mean one story. So we're not talking about the plot, but it's like a concept or an idea that runs through a lot of our work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of mine. I know relationships is one of mine because I love building not just the romantic relationship, but the friendships and, you know, familial relationships, the bands of brothers, bands of sisters, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so... I think in terms of the empathy, that that probably is just something that I'm really drawn to myself mm -hmm. and exploring that idea. And yeah, and it comes out and, um, and probably it speaks to a lot of who I am as a person and the things, the ideas and the concepts that I am drawn towards. Um, because I, when I write books, it's very much in the character's heads. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm not writing myself. I'm writing a character. But obviously I am the writer. So there's going to be you're seeing the characters through me. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's a really difficult one. It's, it's an interesting question. Actually, I hadn't really thought about that before, but you're right. And um, so, yeah, I think that's one of those things that's not something I can explain. It's more like, you know, when um, so I, I did English literature at university and it's like, 200 years ago what was this author thinking when they wrote that so it's it's that kind of thing you know like the outside you has to look in and see like what could possibly have driven this <laughs> <laughs> well I'm gonna have to ask you that like again in like five years because I'm so yeah. curious about that because I had never thought about it either that you know with, without like the sire a perfect example of it they've done away with emotion and the only thing people really care about are power or seemingly care about is power and the people that have retained some emotion and empathy are the good, you know, like the good side or like the still caring and take care of their children, like silver, the silver family. So the Merkin family, I mean, they never lost their empathy. I yeah, love yeah, that's, um, it's interesting because I, I always want to go beyond the obvious. So what we think is good or bad, and then look at the shades of gray in between, because um, we've seen in the series that there's also bad changelings who've mm -hmm. done terrible things driven by whether it's greed or, you know, whatever. So it's it's all about balance mm -hmm. and, and trying to show all the facets. And so I find, um, I think Nikita is just a really interesting character for that because there is no doubt she has done terrible, terrible things. Um, so in that sense, she is very villainous she's a bad character and yet she did a lot of those terrible things to protect her child and she really didn't care who got hurt um while she was doing that and so then it's like well her child wouldn't be alive now if she hadn't done what she did but that doesn't mean that the terrible things she did can be erased you know so mm -hmm. I just find that so interesting to explore and it's um it's just complicated characters <laughs> are just really interesting mm -hmm. and um it's just like yeah I love peeling back those layers and mm -hmm. finding out uh, more and more and it's like yeah they're just 
because they're 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 made up of so much um like each person we meet in life we only see a facet of them and the interesting thing with books is you can see lots of facets of them because we get to see them through different eyes mm -hmm. so for example we've never had a Naya's point of view because you know she's a little kid but we see how Nikita is with her grandchild and then we see Nikita through the eyes of Sasha um, her daughter and we see Nikita through Anthony's eyes we see her through the eyes of um in the in um I think it was the last book um this memory you know how mm -hmm. she interacts with Nikita so we get to see all these viewpoints and they they inform our view of who this person is and it's just you know it's just interesting I, I love I love I love being able to grow characters book by book um so yeah series just naturally series writer yep. <laughs> <laughs> well like we said we could read these continue you know for the rest of our lives too and Chantel mentioned in um the chat a few minutes ago that it was the second and third book of the guild hunter series that really got her attached to the series because then we knew more about the couple while we were learning more about the world yeah yeah i think it's um yeah it's just i i love like the world building is really um important because that holds the whole world together but the core of it has to be the people mm -hmm. um and and the growth of the people and just following different threads of their lives and um because i think if you just had this amazing world it would be very static and flat without the the depth of characterization you know that's what moves it forward it's the people we mm -hmm. care about the people uh, they're they're real to me everybody <laughs> <laughs> they're very real to us i mean i spent a lot of time with your books i think i reread them every year um so and i think but i think that um when you're talking about the characters we also love the world that you're building because um you know when you know in, in the side changelings of course we're just at our the edge of our seats what's going to happen in the side world are they going to have to tear it apart are they going to you know, when memory came along, I was like, who's this memory? <laughs> and, I <was> like, oh. <laughs> and then the same with like, you know, the Guild Hunter series where, you know, we were talking about Nikita with Kalyan is sort of like, you know, that, mm, oh, <laughs> yeah. thing, right? um, or, it, you know, the, it's just amazing what you do with your world. And then you do a, a contemporary with the Rock Hard series and you're like, what are you gonna do with that? But, oh my God. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I love building worlds. I, I do. I think um, I put a lot of time into it because it. I I love seeing all the corners of the world, right? A lot of it is me exploring and finding things out and wow, this is cool. And that's also why I like write a bunch of short stories because it's bits of the world that maybe we don't get to see in the books. Um, and I've done novellas um, for that reason and things like that. But um, yeah, I. I think for world building, so for a strong book in this space, you have to have both. You have to have the characters. You have to have against a strong world. And then the overarching plot line, if if an author is writing books like I write, so I speak for myself, um, I think it's really important that there's a um, there's a really strong thread. So, you know, I don't, um, I love reading sometimes books that stand fully alone, but, my natural tendency in the parent when I'm writing paranormal um, romance or urban fantasy is to write those connected books. Mm -hmm. And I think if I'm doing that, I need to take the reader on a journey, which means it needs to have climax points, right? Like, so the Side Changeling series, we had season one and mm -hmm. something big happened. Where we begin is not where we end, it's not static. And so um, I want to do that with all my series. So First, I blow everything up, <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll find out what happens next. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's not that. I mean, it's not that simple. But yeah, I, I think it's really important to, as a writer, I spend a lot of time thinking about when I start something. It's like, where's the ending? Where is the reader going to get a payoff? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like with the side changing series, you know, you've got a big payoff um, with the. Um, well, Allegiance of Honor is the, the book 15, but the payoff is actually before that because Allegiance of Honor is kind of like the ensemble cast and we get to see everything and we get to tie up a few loose ends. Um, it's a nice bookend book, but there's a lot that's happened to that mm -hmm. point. So 
if you look at the world in slave to sensation and look at the world in allegiance it's in a completely different space mm -hmm. um so that's important to me too just just making sure the journey you're reaching places on the journey so it's not just an endless journey it's like okay we've hit this pit stop or we've hit this town that we were heading towards and it's it's satisfying right like you mm -hmm. can like oh. right so, yeah. or when you see something in an earlier book that has significant meaning in a later book so one of my questions was about Canaan and Noor did you know when you wrote that their special gift was going to be used later <laughs> um yeah I'm trying to not be spoiling yeah um you know no sometimes I don't actually know specific things like that but it, there's weird little things my subconscious puts in and and I'm like oh I wish I'd put that in five books ago and then I look back and I did <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've I learned to I've learned to trust the process and um because I always knew that was going to come up um again so it wasn't like a one-off right like um so not to spoiler it but it's come up again um in the new arc of the series um so i always knew that was important and um the same way that i knew the anchors were important and they're just kind of floating through the books until we get to the point where it's like oh okay boom this is this is their moment you know we find out actually these people that we kind of have been ignoring are actually really really super important mm -hmm. um so yeah quite often i have an inkling of it and then i just go with it i i trust the process i trust my subconscious that it will float up to the top when I need to. I tend to know more about the, the basic structure that's um, of the plot that's underlying all the books. And then in terms of the details, I just let that simmer away. <laughs> oh, well, simmering the bubbling must just be so amazing in your head. <laughs> well, sometimes uh, it's fun and sometimes it's me just throwing things at the wall, like, like a bouncy ball going, oh, it's just, <laughs> can't figure it out and I can tell when it's not working so I would rather just drive myself crazy figuring it out rather than trying to fit something into a box where it's it's not fitting so um yeah it's fun I enjoy it oh good um and I have I have one more of my own questions and I'll go on to everybody else's we have a lot of them um I was wondering about Pyle and Kanto's story this is a totally <laughs> personal question is when I heard that I heard Pyle is a um, an Indian act, you know, like Indian voice. But the audiobook, she didn't have an Indian accent. So I'm just wondering, what is? How did you hear her in your head? Oh, it's interesting. Um, I've never actually thought about that. So I'm actually very audiovisual when I write. Like I, I do hear people. I think she 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 would have um, a slight Delhi accent, but not not like a heavy one because she works so much she's working in Singapore she's going mm -hmm. around the world so it's more an internationalized accent if um trying to think of someone who, who I've heard who has that type of accent is probably an actress or someone that that works internationally a lot so there is the accent is still there but it's it's softened just because mm -hmm. she's out in, you know in different parts of the world so much so so yes 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 but did so you heard her with a little Indian accent? Yeah. Delia. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure I wasn't off there. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go. There's been lots and lots of comments and questions and things. But um, one thing uh, on Facebook, I don't know if they're still with us. They um, when I asked if they want what they would want to be side changeling um, or human, they said a beer changeling, and I don't know if that is a typo, but I think that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> a beer changeling. That's that's the best typo ever for the bears. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Very apropos. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so Donna asks, what happened to Destiny's Rose? What happened to Destiny's Rose? Um, let me have a think. I, I don't want to tell you lies, but I'm pretty sure it's actually in the tower when the um, when the house went down. So I need to double check that. I feel like it survived. <laughs> <laughs> It's like one of those real tiny details that I always double check, like, where was it? Um, I'm pretty sure it survived. Um, I know Ilium saved some things, but um, I know he saved the, the painting and he saved the crossbow. Um, I don't think Destiny's Rose was in the house at the time. So I'm pretty sure it's, it exists, but 
don't hold me to that. I will double check my notes to make sure I'm not telling you lies. <laughs> okay, well, we'll look for some sort of thing about that. Um, so how would you ship Ilium and a Adon? Would, you, would it be I Illidon or Alium? <laughs> oh, God. No, I like Sparkle Bell. <laughs> Sparkle Bell. Bell. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. That one's resolved. Um, will Vivek get a book? Vivek? Um, I did always plan to give him a book. So um, he is being a bit stubborn. So we'll see. Uh, he is, I find him a really, really interesting character. I think he's. His backstory is just so um, fascinating and I just um, I think so far we've never had anyone who has had you know that kind of a backstory as a mortal then going into the immortal world so who will he become um, and how will that shape who he becomes it, that's going to be really really interesting so the short answer yes I would I would totally love to do a story with him when he is ready, when 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 his highness tells me it's time. So, you know, he's a bit like it's on Vivek's schedule. So yeah, I, I'd like to do it for sure. Awesome. We're all in for it. Um, when he's less grumpy or maybe just as grumpy. Um, Christina <laughs> says, I would die for a book or novella about the ancients when they were younger. Maybe a comic book. <laughs> Um, the interesting thing with, um, you know, that is fun. And I think we've got glimpses of it here and there, who they were. Um, would I go back? Because that would make mean I was writing a historical. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked before about historicals and I, I just like to make things up. So um, I'm not the best person to, to write a historical. But um, I think there's a chance you'll see glimpses of it through the books and maybe short stories um, but for now I can't see myself doing like a full book on that because you also have to understand that um, we already know what happened to some of them and so some of it's really like traumatic or <laughs> sad mm -hmm. or, and it's like would you really want to end a book knowing what's coming for this character so that's kind of a thing you have I have to weigh up if I'm thinking any kind of a prequel Mm -hmm. um so yeah, in general i prefer to weave it in through the books um well i watched star wars rogue one so i'm okay with whatever you decide <laughs> <laughs> i'm a total nerd i, I admit it <laughs> um so aid ilium um are we obviously we're going to see more of them um are we going to see more of them as a as a romantic couple yeah you'll see more of them as um like their story continuing because it's just beginning because um, I think I mentioned this in my newsletter, which is that their, their timeline is not our timeline. So it took them 500 years to get to this point. And so, um, you know, I, I, I do get, you know, I read the emails and everything and people are like, oh, the people are a bit disappointed where it ended, but I'm like, it has to, I couldn't, I couldn't force them to a point they weren't ready to go particularly with Arden's history, um, he, 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 he's not ready um, to go beyond that, you know? And um, so I think it's better for, for it to go at the pace they wanted to go. And, mm -hmm. and I felt much more natural. And um, so, yeah, I definitely want to see more. I want to see, again, I want to see what this relationship goes now because they've changed you know they've changed the dynamic they've made mm -hmm. the choice to change the dynamic and so as they said you know how much trouble can we get into anyway so it'd be fun to find out <laughs> uh, well we have some fighting words going on in the chat marissa says it was the perfect pace and i will fight anyone over this <laughs> yes marissa oh well i'm not even gonna go any more there but um what i loved about ilium and um is it adon i say Arden. Adon, because um, I think the audio book says Adon. So I'm going to say Adon because that's what I'm, it's in my head. Um, anyways, I think what I liked about that is that you didn't need to feel the need to explain to people why they made this change, you know, like going from maybe heterosexual to, to, um, to in a male-male relationship. I just love that. Like it was just natural for them. It was 
just a choice? I think for them in particular, so um, it, it was a very much a progression of that relationship. It, I never thought of it in terms of a particular sexuality. You know, in this case, it really is, it's love. It's, mm -hmm. it's just love. And, um, and the other thing was, as I'm writing the series, I kept trying to imagine, you know, like in general, I write, um, you know, men, women together, you know, relationships. And I kept trying to imagine who the heroine would be like and waiting for her to appear for, you know, either of them. And it just never worked because I realized that relationship between the two of them is so powerful. It is so deeper bond that no woman could ever come in between you know what I mean like mm -hmm. she would never have the depth of the bond that they have with each other it just doesn't work mm -hmm. and um so yeah it just it just honestly just felt like this is this is the right you know this is where they want to go and this is where it just headed naturally so yeah it felt it felt very comfortable to write the book and just go with them let them show me the way and and the whole way through I was just super open I was like I want to see where the characters want to take this mm -hmm. I didn't feel at any point that I was pushing it um or that I was making any kind of decision and it is a very slow burn book because that's what it needed to be because they have to sort all this out they have to figure it out mm -hmm. and um and they did and I'm I'm very happy that it, it feels right you know I I just can't imagine them apart so this was what what is meant to be <laughs> <laughs> thank you um so <laughs> kelly asked is stone snow dancer really a larger packer group than black sea or is it just that character bias and black sea secretive so land-based changelings haven't gotten an accurate count of their numbers yeah it's more the latter so they're both massive. They are both massive. Um, but Black Sea, it's very difficult to get numbers because they just won't tell you. Right. <laughs> and, and also because they're, um, so Snow Dancer is more powerful because they're more concentrated a lot of the time, whereas Black Sea is obviously scattered all around the world. So for them to have gather the same amount of power, um, you know in a terrible world where they were going to war against each other or something that would be much harder because their people are just different environments literally they they exist in different environments and they need different um different kinds of places to thrive so um they're both um just what's the word um just mega packs you know they are both mega packs and um but it's it's easier to sort of get an idea of snow dancer size um then black sea because secretive mm -hmm. very secretive very secretive. <laughs> <laughs> um i'm gonna go back to the sparkle bell just a little bit because people are writing in the chat and and, and the questions um is that people generally they're we're talking about how much we'd love the story and everything but that there was this the this the dis or the disconnect for people was that it was the first book with a queer um couple and yet it was the first book also that didn't have a, an explicit scene in it so there was some so what i'm hearing is that where the characters were at that moment in the moment of the writing yeah it was it wasn't a choice on my part not to write it because honestly i i went to into it because obviously i write romances mm -hmm. so and I, i've always written love scenes and i thought yeah sure you know that's that's what I thought. If you'd asked me ahead of time, I would have said, yeah, sure, of course. But um, I, I, when I was writing it, I actually at one point um, I thought, okay, let me see if it works. It just doesn't work. It didn't work. And um, and I just had to accept that. And I had to, and I was like, I'm sure people are going to be mad at me <laughs> for not writing it, but I wasn't going to push it just to get it in there. Um, and the other thing is, um, if this had been the only book I was going to write about them, then sure, I would be like, you know people have a right to be mad but um it's not you know there's going to be more they're going to be back so you will see more of the progression of their relationship and um so yeah i think that will happen when it's time to happen and i think it's just i, I just have to keep going back to who these two are and particularly arden um he's he's just come out of the darkness you know he is just emerging and 
and they've just taken their relationship to this next level and it's not they're just 500 years man they they don't move that fast these two mm -hmm. so <laughs> it's, it just logically it didn't make sense um so yeah it would it really would have felt like i was i was forcing it where it didn't fit and i would have been really disappointed in the book because i i always try to i only ever put out books that i'm really happy with that i feel like um that are honest um as a writer and that would have not felt that way you know that would have felt like i was putting something into because it's an expectation and um and I and it wouldn't have worked for me. I would have felt like I did them a disservice. So um, so yeah, you guys will just have to wait <laughs> for when they're when they're at that point, and then yeah, we'll get there. You know that we'll read anything you write. I mean, if you want to write me a grocery list right now, I will read it. But <laughs> so that is completely fine. Um, let's see. Um, as a writer, how do you stay in the romance genre of writing and not get distracted by other parts of the plot? Joan asks that. You mean how do I stay focused on the the like the relationship? Is that yeah. the question? Yeah. Um, that's pretty natural, I think, with a um with the romance. Like, I don't know, like when I'm when I'm in my romance space, I know the romance is the driver of a story. Whereas if I'm writing a thriller, the plot or like, you know, the whodunit is the driver of the story and my brain just automatically goes that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, it's it's not something I consciously think about. It just is. The only time I think about it is like um, when I'm editing um, and I might see that actually um, we've had like three chapters with no relationship stuff and it's all plot stuff and sometimes that can work because especially if they're working together to figure something out and then so the relationship's still there but it's just plot heavy in those chapters and that's fine um so that's really only when i talk about the technical think about the technical side of things but in general it's just instinct yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> okay um Chantel asks, are you planning to write about the romance between Yuri and Narita, Amin and Christabel, or Axel and Tamar? Oh, um, look, honestly, I want to write about everybody. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I am fascinated by everybody. So the list is endless. Um, I haven't been doing uh, novellas um, as much lately, just, um, just timing and um, not having the space to write it. But um, because some of those would be novellas. But yeah, I would I would love to. Honestly, I love everybody. I want to see everybody. Um, in terms of the main books, it's more a case of what works in the timeline of the plot. So if if one of those characters sort of comes to the surface and isn't perfectly placed for that part of the series timeline, um, you know, happy to do their book. But yeah, otherwise. I mean, recently I just did, uh, I think, three part short story in my newsletter, which is free if anyone's not a member. And um, and it was Zara, you know, I always wanted to write Zara and I just couldn't couldn't get her into the books and I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I just did this short story so that, you know, mm -hmm. um, poor Zara has been waiting since book one. So <laughs> it made it happen. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm going to be writing this till I'm 99, people. It's fine. We'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> but there's always more people. Like, what about Adam from the, the Eagles? And what about, you know, like, there's always, like, this more. So, I, you know, that's okay. I, I won't complain. I know. Um, Mandy asks, what made you choose angels, yet keep them really not traditional angels? That's just how they came to me. To be honest, like um, I think because I've been thinking so much about immortals, and um, again I've been reading stuff and I was frustrated with how human the immortals seemed. Just immortals in general, it wasn't angels specifically. And so when my and I was just constantly thinking about, well, if you live ten thousand years, would you act human? Would you even be human in any way, um, in terms of your thinking or your emotions? And so I think when my angels popped up in my head, they were very inhuman and um just really really powerful beings who lived a really long time and were shaped by that so um and i 
I knew from the start these were not like sort of um what shall I say not religious angels you know these were another species um that we shared the planet with and this this is who they were and we just ran with it yeah mm -hmm. well I think that um again the world building where you created this you know they the ven that the venom thing that the thing about the vampires and how they have to inject them otherwise they become crazy like Urum was it Urum and I, yeah, I was Urum. like yeah, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Like you wouldn't like who thinks of that? No lady sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, some of it it's just like when I'm writing, it just comes out and mm -hmm. I don't consciously make a decision because I'm not a planner when I write. I just mm. I just go with the story. So um and that was funny. If I'd actually thought about it, I would have been like, this is super weird. Who's gonna read this? But um I just wrote it because it was fun <laughs> and yeah it, it worked so I think um, I always tell you know young writers in particular like trust your gut you know I think sometimes people start to judge their own work too early and um but if you go with your gut you know you can come up with some really fabulous ideas like trust your instincts and trust your subconscious and mm -hmm. just go with the crazy ideas <laughs> and mm -hmm. see what happens right well I also think that you know, um, when you when I discovered you, there was a lot of paranormal out there. And a lot of it was, like you said, very similar. You know, they didn't want to be a shapeshifter. It was agony. It was torture. Um, you know, it wasn't happy. And so but yours, your two series are so different from a lot of the um, current or at that time current um, series. And I think that has opened up other people's writers, other writers to explore uh, um, worlds that they might not have otherwise. Yeah, I, I hope so. You know, you always want, I I think every writer wants to expand their genre in some way, um, small or big. And um, yeah, so it'd be lovely if, if um, what I've written has helped other people take some risks of their own and try some crazy stuff. And yeah. I hope so too. But I'll, you know, uh, once a master, always a master. So that'll be you. <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of chatter about the Legion, and I have that question too. Is the Legion coming back? We miss them. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's, it's my. I'm heartbroken that um, what happened, but at the same time, that was their destiny. You know, that was why they came, and so they fulfilled their destiny, and the, they're heroes. You know, they've. Um, but yeah, it makes me cry when I think about it. <laughs> I get really emotional. Um, but I honestly don't know because they are the bracelet the ancient constructs. And so it's there's a lot about them that's unknown. There's a lot about the Guild Hunter world that is also unknown to the people who are currently alive because a lot of the really, really old ones just kind of go to sleep. And the knowledge fades because it's such a long history. And even the old ones who are alive, you know, they have these tangled knots of memories. Like how much can you actually remember if you have 250,000 years of memory in your head? Mm -hmm. And so um, I really don't know about them. I, I, I'm not sure what, um, what, what is going to happen. And it just makes me sad to think of their tower. It's empty and echoing and yeah. <laughs> yeah. sorry I don't have an answer for you guys yet well their relationship with Elena was just so so heartwarming you know the way that it built and it changed <laughs> both of them so I, I thought that was just so well done oh, yeah <laughs> I, um, um, I saw Stephanie says Elena is minding it yes yes she is minding it but I mean the emptiness of it not being filled with the with the legion is is and I think that's what Elena feels as well you know it's it's so sad that this place that they built and that she's caring for because she she promised she would and um but you know the heart and soul of it's gone because they're not there so yeah yeah um elizabeth on uh, facebook says i bawled after they fulfilled their dentist destiny <laughs> yeah it was it was really sad and um I think even me, when I'm writing it, I was like, can I make this not happen? <laughs> but it had to happen, you know? And again, it's about being honest to the story and sometimes making the hard choices um, because honestly, I don't know if this is every writer, but me, it's like, 
I could just keep everybody happy and all my characters would be happy all the time. <laughs> it's not realistic and also it would be very boring. <laughs> I think you guys wouldn't want to hear, oh, this person is happy and this person is also happy. Everybody's happy all the time. Um, mm -hmm. It's just not real, particularly in these worlds they they exist in, which are quite dangerous, particularly, you know, in the Guild Delta world is so terribly dangerous. So even the conversations Elena has with Sarah, where she's worried about Sarah, you know, Sarah is mortal, and Sarah is pointing out, actually, you know, you're you're fighting these horrible, terrible immortals. You could be dead way before me. So mm -hmm. um, it's it's putting everything in the context of those worlds, and so these choices need to be, you know, true to them. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And Victoria says that making them come back would might cheapen their sacrifice during the war. Um, I'm sure that you'll find a way to bring them back that it doesn't feel like that <laughs> if you decide to. Um, Who knows? We shall see. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there'll be a novella about Elena's sister who's a potential hunter or novel? Um, at this stage, I know because she's very young. Like she is quite young. I'm trying to remember her age, but I know she's still a teenager. Mm -hmm. So um, no, I haven't really thought about that. And um, I think what we've seen of her in the books is is enough for now. She's she is you can see who she's becoming, who she's growing into, and um, yeah, I'm sure she'll have a very interesting life up ahead. Mm -hmm. um, if she feels like I need to tell her story, I shall. But um, yeah, for now I'm just leaving her be, just like um, Kit in the side changing world. Um, you know, he's just growing into himself, and mm -hmm. um, it's okay. You know, he can he can have that space and. He'll pop up here and there. I loved seeing him in the last book of the mechanic, the plane. I was like, oh my God, how did he end up here? Exactly. <laughs> what is that? Trains, planes, and automobiles kind of thing. Um, somebody asks, will there ever be a an, uh, happy ending for Tejan, the al rat alpha? He's really grown on me. Yeah, it's quite funny. Um... He, he wasn't an unexpected fan favorite. <laughs> I mean, I loved him. I loved him, but I thought I'm writing this rat helper and people are just going to be like, no way. But um, so I, I'm glad you guys love him too. Um, but um, I'd like to think of a happy, you know, he'll get a happy ending. He's a very interesting, fascinating character. I think the story would be super interesting. I don't have a hint of his heroine yet she hasn't sort of revealed herself to me but um it's always there in the back of my mind I never forget Tejan because um yeah he is this I think someone used the word suave in there he's very suave you know I just see him as like this underworld kingpin and he's he's amazing <laughs> and he's so he's an alpha you know he looks after his people so he's got that protective drive and yeah he would just make a great hero uh, but yeah has to be the right woman you know, so someone willing to go into his world because as Alpha, you know, he's not going to leave his people and move into hers. So if she's someone from an outside world, like not part of the, the underground network already, that would be really interesting. But um, I have no idea right now. So we'll just keep an eye open and see, see who appears. Okay, well, sounds like it won't be an eagle. <laughs> oh, wow can you imagine <laughs> <laughs> well you do you do like match up some very unlikely characters it could be like a lady hawk remember that um the oh, old yeah. movie with the yeah you know they just touch at this this one moment and oh i love that movie <laughs> Me too. we were just talking about our favorite 80s movies and that was one of mine willow <laughs> princess bride all of them um <laughs> That was very romantic. So a big question that we all have on our minds is when are we going to get some more about Nikita and Anthony? I don't know what's going on with these those two, okay? So I don't know, when, whenever they decide. <laughs> so <laughs> whenever they decide, that's when you'll get more. It's, I mean, I know they're my characters, but they have very much their own personalities and their own drives and, and yeah. You're just going to keep seeing them through the books because they are they're very powerful people in the world so they will appear not in every book because they don't have a role to play in every book but i think they'll they'll be popping in and out we shall see okay um 
let me see. Will we find out what happened to Tatiana? I think we know what happened to Tatiana. <laughs> Still happening to Tatiana. <laughs> as far as I know. I mean, it was Caleb, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> do you think Tasha and Elena can ever be friends? Uh, who's that? Tasha, Tasha and, and Elena? I think they have a mutual respect, right? But I don't know if friendship is a possibility at this point in time. Maybe ask me again in a few hundred years, you know, in the mm -hmm. world. Um, right now, uh, I think, um, I can't remember which book it is. Elena has respect for her because she is a fighter. She is heroic. And I think the same in return, you know, Tasha sees who Elena is. So, um, and I think that's an interesting dynamic also to write, like two women who maybe are not friends and, you know, they aren't friends um, right now. And perhaps their friendship is not a possibility, but you can still respect someone for mm -hmm. who they are without being friends with them. So that's where I, where they are in their relationship. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know think if they're going to be heart to hearts between those two anytime soon. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I'd want to hang out with my husband's ex-girlfriends, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, would you really? Yeah, it no. happens sometimes, but it's not so close, I think, particularly to, because you have to remember, um, like, these books obviously have been going on for a while, but the timeline of the, the series is not that long. So it's, it's actually a very short timeline. So everything is quite mm -hmm. close. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the emotions of, of, of all involved. Mm -hmm. um, do you think we'll get a book for Kier? Kier, I would love to write something about Kier. Um, I'm starting to kind of have a hint of what that might be. So I'm just going to sit on that for a while and see if it actually, if it's not just me being completely insane. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, I find him incredibly, incredibly fascinating because he, again, is one of those characters. He has so much depth, you know. Mm -hmm. There's glimpses of who Kira is, but Kira is actually very private. Um, so you, you really see, so he's he's this person who is very, um, there's that calm, you know, he is the healer, he has that presence. But then he, that's who he is to the outside world. But what's inside Kira, you know? Um, who's the who's the person within so I just would love to spend more time with Kia so um, I think he's a definite possibility okay good <laughs> um, about Alice Eldridge oh Alice um, she's just in a difficult space because again the timeline for her is actually quite short so I think um, this is again I think we can relate to um, you know, like Arden has tra trauma and then it took him that long and he's an immortal. And then um, Alice has trauma and she's obviously on a mortal timeline, but that's still a very short timeline right now from her waking to finding out that everybody she knows is dead. You know, that's like, imagine waking up tomorrow and everything you ever knew is gone. That's like, that's massive. And I think it's going to take a while for her to be in a space where she's ready to process. Um, but, you know, they're all hitting on her because she's she's amazing. Yeah. So um, who knows? Who knows? Maybe someone will sweet talk, sweet talk her into <laughs> giving it a go. Um, but for now, she's just doing her own thing, um, you know, doing her research. And yeah. Um, OK, what about? Danny's book from hard from the hard play series I have actually finished writing it so yay! <laughs> I was actually talking to my agent yesterday about cover stuff so um I don't have a date for it yet because we need to get it edited and you know all that good stuff um but I'm hoping in the first first quarter to first half of next year we'll be able to yeah mm -hmm. that's that's the aim it's a fun book. It's a really fun book. It's 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 a happy book. So um, and it's 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 fun and sweet and yeah. I love the Rock Hard series for that reason because it's it is a little bit lighter than some of yeah. the you know the other two series. Um, although I do have to say that 
can I give the spoiler for the first book when when he told him to take the the websites down and they went and I was like oh, that's what needs to happen in the world <laughs> yeah right? yeah um, I think the first books the rock books were quite more intense but, you know there was some quite dark themes um because we had Abe you know with the drugs and all that kind of stuff and then the second um sort of spin-off um books have been lighter because it's around this family and um, the friendships and and the falling in love and yeah I just I just like having all these different things and I think um this book is really good for this time and it's good for me to write it it's it's fun and I mean our world's been kind of dark and intense for a while <laughs> so it was it's a nice like it's a nice um and it feels very natural to these characters you know just mm -hmm. the back and forth and the banter and the just just it's funny you know they're funny together and they're fun and sweet and young um yeah it's so yes yes that's coming it's actually written so I can talk about it now <laughs> instead of promising and then never never delivering so yeah um so we're at about an hour do you mind staying for just a couple more questions yeah yeah no worries go for it okay so I told you earlier today I saw on Facebook somebody asked how tall are Elena and Raphael in the seven. <laughs> okay, so I would actually have to pull out my folder. I actually write stuff like this down. I have everyone's schedule, um, like stats, um, but the folder is too far away for me to reach. So um, it's in the books. I mean, they're both, Elena and Raphael are both tall. He's a bit taller than her, but not like a crazy amount. So she's not, um, she's not six feet tall as, as far as my memory goes. Um, maybe if she puts on her boots. Um, so um, oh, I'd be guessing. I, I want to look at my. See, this is why I don't answer specific questions without looking at my my bible because I want to be very very. very... Think she's five nine. Yeah, she's. I think that sounds roughly right. It's, which would put him at like six four ish, something mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, in some of the. The paranormals you know like the demons are like seven to eight feet tall and you're like how can they even you know have sex how you know how <laughs> <laughs> well, women <laughs> i'll tell you a little trick authors use like when they're working stuff like i use it for fight scenes but um oh it's just on the other side i was pick it up but you can get these little dolls um that they that artists use a lot to work out um how things move anyway you can use that for like I use it for fight scenes. I do know some authors who also use it for for sexy times to figure out where where everything goes. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so the, uh, I, Jessica says I wanted all the angel couples to have babies. So I would love to know which couple is the most likely to have angel babies in the next five hundred years. So there's a big giant clue in, <laughs> in the books. Um, so somebody is really, 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 really for, for cubs. So I think the chances are high in terms of whether there'll be angel babies or a hybrid is, um, yeah, well, I guess we'll find out. But yeah, that's the most likely. Okay, I'm seeing lots of guesses in the chat and I'm all over them. <laughs> um, are we going to see, <clears throat> hear from, about Jessamine and her wing? Is she better? Um, again, we're working on an immortal timeline. So things just sometimes move a lot slower than we would like. <laughs> um, she, It's in progress, you know, and um, she'll appear if it fits naturally into the books. Um, that's the thing I always have to keep in mind is that I would love to see everybody, but I can't because that would just be this weird disjointed story where I'm just putting people into. So um, uh, hopefully um, the books will, you know, if we visit the refuge, for example, in a book, then of course we more likely to run into Jessamine and find out how she's doing. So, but yeah, definitely in the future, we're going to find out. Um, and you know, for example, if I do do a Kia book, then Kia and Jessamy are like super tight. So of course you're going to see her. So it all depends on um, what stories come next and you know where the timelines cross. 
for the stories of the different characters. Yeah. Awesome. But you won't be left hanging forever. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It will turn up, but it just turns up naturally where necessary. Mm -hmm. um, will there be any characters from Rainfire in any of your upcoming books? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and this is the last question. It's a big one. Can you tell us anything about Storm Echo? <laughs> <laughs> um yes i can what can i tell you so i can tell you that um i'm handing in the book late sorry cindy <laughs> but it's gonna be good <laughs> um no it's some. Um, what can i tell you i think i've already mentioned it's we're going back to san francisco so people think about who went to san francisco somebody went to san francisco somebody's gonna guess it so um in the last book, I see Stephanie has beat everyone to it. <laughs> so there is a Macant in San Francisco right now. And um, the the heroine is not somebody you know. So, um, but she is a changeling. Um, so it is going to be a Psy changeling book. <laughs> um, and what else can I tell you? Um, we're gonna see a few people that we know really well. And, um, yeah, so it's been really interesting, actually. I've loved being back. So there's a scene that I just finished um, editing. So I'm in the final draft and I'm cleaning up the scenes and stuff. And it's um, in Tamsin's kitchen. So that was really fun because that's one of the my most favorite scenes in Slave to Sensation was in Tamsin's kitchen. So it's um, we're back there. There are some cubs involved. And um, yeah, so it's, 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 it's nice to be back. Um, on that side of the world and catch up with a few people. But we are also going to be getting um, a lot of um, sort of like not updates, but you know, we're still connected to what was happening previously. So this book kicks off, um, basically that thread in the last book is not dropped. So we will find out what happens in this book in terms of the plot. I'm trying not to be spoilery for anyone who didn't read um, the previous book yet, but um, yeah, what something big happened in the last book um, and that's going to be picked up in this book as well. Okay. If somebody, um, Jayla on Facebook says they, they have a feeling it's Pax's book, but we're not saying, are we? <laughs> no, I can tell you it's not Pax's book. I will tell you that it's not Pax's book. So, yeah. Okay. So I promise that was about my last question. Um, so I do have to say that I cannot wait for Storm Echo. I loved all of your most, re all of your books. I, like I said, I reread them all the time. And I think that a lot of people here do. And you have bought me so many hours of just pure joy and escape and fun. So thank you. Oh, no, thank you. And I have to say, I really appreciate my readers, especially, I mean, for coming along on this journey with me, whether you found me, you know, yesterday, or you found me with my first book, I appreciate each and every one of you because as a writer, um, you know, I would always write, but I would be writing in my basement for myself <laughs> if nobody else read the stories. So thank you for, thank you for, you know, trusting me to take you on these journeys and um, enjoying them and, and being involved with the characters. And so I'm not the only crazy person who's thinking about <laughs> them all the time. It's great to know other people also love them and are thinking about them and, um, you know, are eager to find out what happens next. So yeah, I love you guys. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you everybody who's come tonight. And um, remember you can buy signed books from Bank Square Books and, um, Storm Echo is due out, I think, next June-ish. It's uh, end of July. End of, end of July. July, okay. Yeah, so, July 26th, I'm pretty sure. But um, yeah. Is that the one? Okay, yeah. So I know it was announced and we're all like, can't wait for it. And what about the next <laughs> Guild Hunter? I think that there was something on um, Fantastic Fiction for Guild Hunter too. Uh, there's got no date. Um, so it's uh, I don't have a date for that yet. So probably... So Stormaker was just announced. So it'd probably be a few more months until they, they've got a date for the next Guild Hunter. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the um, Rock Series book is coming out when? I know you said that um, was the It'll be the first day. half of next year. I should have a specific date for you, hopefully in the next month or maybe maybe the start of next year. I should have a date for you. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you. We cannot wait. It'll be a wonderful year, I'm sure. 
So thank you again for being here with us and um, and just always being so, so um, gracious when I email you and say. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it's lovely to talk to you. You too. All right. So good night, everybody. Have a wonderful happy. evening and happy reading. <laughs> good night. Night. <laughs> going anywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so fun. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>